For centuries, our kings and queens have been laid to rest in the finest tombs. But for 500 years, the body of one of them has been missing, our most infamous monarch, Richard III. Last summer, a team of archaeologists and enthusiasts unearthed a skeleton in a car park. No. No. That might just be the missing king. Of Richard III, one of the most reviled kings in British history. In the months since, scientists have been trying to unlock that skeleton's secrets and reveal its identity. was going to be carbon dated its DNA would be tested against a living descendant the bones and their potential injuries would be scanned in 3d and images of the skull sent to the best facial reconstruction expert in the country the images from the CT scan were now with the specialist at the University of Dundee using technology developed for criminal investigations she was going to reconstruct the face of our skull in layers of muscle and skin. First of all, just first impressions of this skull is that it's got quite a long, gracile, in other words, not very strongly masculine features. Um, so it's, you know, it's an interesting skull to look at. It's got quite a, a lot of teeth that have been lost from the mandible, so he's going to have quite an interesting face. But the process that we follow for the reconstruction is to use little virtual pegs and attach them to the surface of the skull so that it gives a kind of contour map within which we can work to produce the depiction. Next step is to add the anatomical structures, starting with the eyeballs, and basically slowly build the face from the skull out to the muscle structure. As we put the muscles onto this skull, the face starts to develop. So we can start to see the shape, especially around the lower face, around the jaw. Now forswore me in my mother's womb to shrimp mine arm up like a withered shrub. I'm just adding some skin. We do this as we would with real clay, really, is just to add kind of balls of clay over the muscle structure and start with quite a rough shape and then it becomes more and more detailed as we move along into the process. Really from the muscle structure onwards, we're starting to see what the face is developing into. Some of the skin there over the top of the forehead, so you're starting to see the shape of the top of his head. The same science that can put a face to an unidentified victim of crime will allow us to stare into the face of Richard III, a King of England who died 500 years ago when he was just 32. Hey, come on in. Hi. Let's go. And now, put your eyes on your ready? Yeah? Wow. wow. Remarkable. You can kind of see the man, really, can't you? It doesn't look like the face of a tyrant. I'm sorry, but it doesn't. And there's no Tudor mythology all over him. No. He's a bonny lad. Yeah. <laughs> he is. <laughs> he is. He's very handsome. Mm. It's like you could just talk to him, have a conversation with him right now. <laughs> it's been a complete roller coaster ride. 
And to see this now, to sit here, four years on, after everything that's happened, after everything that we've been through, and to see the real Richard III, um, I'm just full of joy.